Hi, in some cases you might want to print out these kind of sticker labels as you see over here. So these are often used for addresses, that's why we call them the address label creator. Uh, in this case, what we want to do is actually uh, get a list of, let's say, accounts, but it can be anything, obviously, it's the data source that you select. Uh, and for each account, we want to print out uh, three account uh, addresses per row. So what we need to do is get the accounts, split them over three rows, uh, uh, three accounts per row, and then replicate the rows for each uh, row that we have or for each for the number of accounts that we have. So that means that we're going to have to reorganize the data a bit because our data is going to be structured like this when we get it from the data source. We're going to get it as a list of uh, addresses. So this is the, uh, I just simplified it and we just said, okay, this is the address. Uh, we have, let's say, seven records. And here uh, we have the address and we have the name of the account. So both of these data we need, but we need them in rows of three in this case. If you have a sticker sheet with two or four, obviously that's just a setting I will show you in a minute. Okay, so, so in this case, what we need is that we're going to have uh, three uh, records for each record that we need, because that's the rows we're gonna have to repeat. So you see here that we have a field name, billing address underscore one, underscore, and name underscore one. We have billing address underscore two, and name underscore two. And then we have billing address three, and name underscore three. That's important, because that's how we're gonna pivot the data. To pivot this data, we're gonna create an actionable. Okay, let's go into PDF Butler. And let's take a look how we would do that. Step one is we need data sources, obviously. So in our data sources, uh, we're going to add two data sources. One data source is going to be all accounts. So I'm just going to print out all the accounts. This is a dev org, so that's not going to be too much data. OK. Then next up, I need a uh, key value data source, uh, which I call address labels data. So uh, this is a key value data source. And I'm going to add a bunch of fields. Which fields do I need? I actually going to need um, the fields that I have defined over here. So if you would need if you would have, uh, of course, four rows, you would have billing address four and name four. But in this case, we only have three. So what do I need to do is I'm going to have to add these billing address one, and the name one uh, to uh, to my data source. Let's do that one by one. Okay. So it's going to add one, two, three, four, five, six fields here. Billing address one. This is an address. Billing address two. This is an address. Billing address three. This is an address. Then I have name underscore one. I'm going to copy this name underscore two and name underscore three. Again, if you have four fields, just put underscore four as well, add that as well. But now my data sources are ready. So let's take a look at this data source in Salesforce. You would see that it's uh, of type uh, key value and that it's a list of objects. So that's important. Let's create this data source as this defined over here. Okay. Now, that does not, of course, change our data. We just have two data sources, but now we need on our .config and actionable. That actionable, click here, new, is going to be called address labels, as you can see over here. I'm going to say next, and then I'm going to call this actionable address labels. This is, of course, just a name. Then the class that I'm going to use is, please copy that from the Academy don't try to rekey it. Uh, the when is uh, before but after data sources. So that means that we actually going to use the, da the data from a data source. So that's the power that you can just configure the data that you still want to use, but then use that in the uh, in the next steps. Uh, of course, I want it active. The data source that I'm going to use. So the input data source is going to be all accounts. So that's my list of accounts. Uh, if you have a different set of data source or you have a selection there, 
the number of records per row, that's three in this case, uh, because remember that we uh, wanted uh, this kind of a sheet where we have three uh, items there. Then the fields that I want to use, the fields that I want to use, actually these are the fields coming from my account data source, and that's the billing address. And then it's comma separated, so I put a comma here. And it's the name. That's the two fields in my demo that I want to use. Then the output data source is going to be address labels data. So that's going to be the, uh, the key value data source. OK, that's the configuration. So uh, this actionable will now make sure that we are going to pivot that data from a flat list over here into a list where we have actually three records per row that we need. Perfect. That's exactly the result that uh, we're going to need. So let's go back to our configuration here and start looking at the Word document we're going to use. In the Word document, as you see over here, uh, we have created a table. And this table actually is the exact measures of the uh, stickers that we are going to print. So most of the time when you buy this kind of, che of sheets, then the, uh, the company would say, uh, what's the sizes of these stickers? And then you can use those sizes to create those kind of, these kind of tables here. You see that we only have one row, obviously. Why? Because we are going to replicate the row uh, for, each, uh, for each row in our pivot data source. So, um, what I, what we have done also over here is maybe interesting what we have set the margin of this uh, document to left and right zero. So that, uh, yeah, we would actually be ex very uh, to the uh, border of the sheet so that there is no margin there. And then the, uh, as you can see, the table can, uh, can spread over the 100% of the sheet. We have created a bunch of that uh, merge fields here. So that's the merge field for our account name. It's called account underscore one, uh, address underscore one, two, and three. So that's the merge fields. And now these merge fields we are going to uh, add into our configuration. First of all, we need to tell the system to replicate the row. So I'm going to take this one uh, row. I'm going to call this row. It's going to be a table row. The data source is obviously our account label. Um, then the merge field is account one. And then we say, OK. Now we're going to create all the childs. So we're going to have account one here. It's going to be a single. Then that's going to be the name. So you see that that is now name one. Yeah? So that's the field that we are need to map uh, with the accounts uh, with the merge fields that we are going to use. So this is account two. Um, this is name two. And I'm just going to quickly go through them one by one, three. So now my configuration is done. I'm going to save this. Uh, the combination already exists. So that's a validation issue. Okay, indeed. Uh, this one should be account three. So I created quite some mistakes here. And now the configuration is perfectly fine. So let's generate this uh, document, the address labels. And yes, this is exactly the result that I wanted to see. So we now see three accounts uh, per row, nicely split out. And then, of course, when the three are done, we're going to go to the next row and then see again three accounts. So in total here, I have uh, five times three, 15, 16 accounts. And that would be exact in the number of accounts that I have here in my, uh, in my system. So that's how you configure the, uh, um, the, the label creator. Yeah. Uh.